come back to life when it rains. Oh, a very cool concept. I bet that's going to come into play later. It no. won't. Oh. And we're going to have this guy <laughs> Vanderbilt. It didn't rain. Not once. Hey, guys. Dennis Mocken here. Thanks for hanging out. Today's your action's latest pitch meeting. This is Army of the Dead. Now, I just got done watching this movie, and it was a little longer than I was expecting for a zombie movie. At least it uh, feels like the norm isn't really that long. But it's one thing that I've begun to learn about Zack Snyder films. The longer, the better. So we'll have to wait and see what Ryan has to say about it. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, please go over and support Spooner and Ryan George's channel. We'll leave both those links along with links to the rest of the description. And I'm getting closer and closer to hitting my goal of getting to 6,000 subscribers. Just a little under 300 away now. But I know of everybody in here who isn't. And I'm getting closer and closer of hitting my goal, getting to 6,000 subscribers. Just a little under 300 away now. And if everybody in here would subscribe to us so right now, that will help me get there this, that much quicker. And it's super easy to do. All you have to do is just go right below this video. First, give that like button some love and hit that big red button there. And without any further ado, let go. So, you have a zombie movie for me? Yes, mm -hmm. sir, I do. And you've never seen zombies like this before. How's that? Mostly out of focus. What? Oh, yeah, we're gonna do practically every shot with super shallow depth of field and really blurry background. Sounds a little distracting. That. It might be. So, anyway... I didn't even notice that! I wasn't that... What? There's gonna be the zombie outbreak in Vegas, right? So the government basically walls up the city to contain the spread. Smart. And they declare it's no longer part of America. Well, why was that necessary? Unclear. So eventually the government decides to nuke the city to kill all the zombies. Okay. But this casino owner, Tanaka, has $200 million in a vault under his casino. So he approaches this former mercenary, Scott Ward. Oh, and he tells him to assemble a team? He does. Mm -hmm. So Scott needs some teammates. He needs a safe crowd. Cracker, obviously. I thought it was Tanaka's vault. Can't he give them the code? No. Okay. And they also need a helicopter pilot. Oh, they can fly in. That'll be helpful. No, see, the government doesn't actually allow people to fly into Vegas. It's restricted airspace. But they can fly out? Yeah, sure. I don't care. So Tanaka also adds his own head of security, Martin, to the team. And this guy's real suspicious. Oh, sounds suspicious. He is. Very. So to Vegas and Scott's estranged daughter, Kate, forces herself into the movie because she has a friend that's inside the city. Sure, she may as well be in the movie. Yeah, why not? Oh, she will be, and she's gonna get everybody killed. Oh, my God. So they head into the quarantine zone, and they see a zombie queen and a zombie tiger, both of which were turned by an alpha zombie. Oh, biting tigers is tight. Then they're gonna stumble no, upon not. a bunch of zombies that are hibernating. Oh, zombies hibernate. Some of them do, sir, because as I was writing this movie, I was like, hey, what if zombies did everything? Interesting. Yeah, we're talking strong zombies, fast zombies, martial arts zombies, dumb mm -hmm. zombies. Okay. Robot zombies. What? Yeah, a couple of the zombies will be robots with glowing blue eyes. It's gonna look very cool. What's going on there? It's gonna look very cool. Yeah, They're it robot did. robot zombies. Why are some of the zombies robots? It's gonna look great. Okay. It, oh, we're I also mean, gonna mention that, that a bunch of these zombies got dried out in the sun, but they come back to life when it rains. Oh, a very cool concept. I bet that's gonna come into play later. It no. won't. Oh. And we're gonna have this guy <laughs> Vanderbilt. It didn't rain. Not once. Okay keep bringing up this saw that he loves to use. Oh, probably gonna be a crazy scene of him using that later, no. huh? Ah, there won't be. No, no All right. there was before that, though. Yeah, it's like the famous Chekhov's gun writing advice, right? If in the first act you show a gun on the wall, then in the second act, just kind of have a good time. That's not how that goes. Anyway, so eventually this girl Chambers tells Martin, like, hey, I know you're up to something, dude. Right. So then Martin locks her in a room with some zombies, but she manages to jump through a window near the group. Oh, so they rescue her? No, nobody does anything to help her, despite her being just a few feet away from them. They just watch her get killed. But she must yell something about Martin before getting killed. Nope. She doesn't, no. But her friend Mikey accuses Martin. He's like, you clearly had something to do with this. Does Mikey do anything about it? He doesn't, no. no not going to talk about it again. Was everybody no. in the group just not suspicious of Martin no. or something? No, they definitely were. Some of them even discussed how it might be best if this guy died. So, okay. Wait, and so eventually this guy's... I don't remember that bit. ...is going to cut the head off of the queen zombie. Oh, why does he do that? Well, he reveals that this entire mission was actually about getting this zombie head. His boss doesn't actually care about the money. This is worth more. Well, why didn't Tanaka just hire people to do that? Why plan a fake heist? So the movie can happen. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. So and so none of his people would die. 
This guy takes off with the head. No, he goes back to the heist, even though they were standing right next to where they entered the quarantine zone. Oh, interesting choice. So then the safe cracker guy in Vanderhoe try to open the safe, right? Right. But this thing has like pressure activated booby traps, so they can't just walk up to it. So what do they do? Well, they start trying to trick a zombie into activating the traps, but it's hard to do because zombies are dumb and they keep turning towards them. Can't they just throw a dead zombie or a right? dead zombie limb? Probably, but they're not going to do that. Instead, they're going to microwave a zombie hand and use that to trick a zombie into going to eat it. What do you mean? Well, the idea is that zombies are attracted to warm flesh. Doesn't that mean that all the zombies outside in the scorching hot Las Vegas sun would constantly be trying to eat each other? I don't know. Fair enough. So anyway, eventually sure. they get the safe open and there's $200 million in $100 bills. Just stacks of cash. Oh, I feel like that probably weighs thousands of pounds. Nope. Yeah, probably. So how do they plan on getting literal tons of cash and themselves on a single Bags. helicopter out of, of the bags. city in one shot. Well, they brought backpacks. That'll do it. And then they yeah. also find so out So clearly that not that heavy. The nuke has been pushed forward by a day, so they have like an hour to get out of the city. Oh, no. So then this girl Maria decides that this is a good time to stop everything and talk to Scott about her feelings. Oh, can't that wait 45 minutes? Yeah, well, that, that, there was a lot of that. She's actually about to die, so we kind of have to make people care about the death scene that's about to happen. Maybe you should set that up before this scene. Maybe, but I'm not gonna. Well, okay then. And Scott's daughter, she takes off. Well, why? A bomb is about to level the city. Well, she wants to go save her friend in a super far away building. Okay, even if she finds her friend and even if her friend is alive, what's the plan to get out of the city without the helicopter? Unclear. Huh. So then Scott and the pilot take off in the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what's the point of going to go? It's just They're across so the stupid. city to try and rescue her and her friend who she somehow did manage to find. Okay. And the alpha zombie, he's watching them fly away from the helipad and he's very angry. He wants to kill them very much. Oh, uh, it's going to be hard for him to catch up with no. a helicopter. Actually, it's no. going to be super it's easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, he has a zombie horse. So he gets down from the top of a building onto a horse across the city and up another building in the same time it took them to fly a helicopter. He does, yes. yeah. So then they fly away again, but the Alpha jumps on board and the nuclear bomb explodes. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And Scott manages to kill the Alpha, but then the helicopter crashes and pretty much everyone dies except Kate. Well, what about her friend she was trying to save? The one whose rescue drove the entire last part of the movie? Oh, unclear. We're not even gonna show her. Oh, that's a Well, the helicopter went down, so it's assumed that she died. A little frustrating. So then after the blast, that guy Vandero gets out of the safe, which that safe cracker guy had pushed him into to save him. Okay. And he just kind of walks out of the burning city and through the desert. What about Fallout? I mean, yeah, that's a pretty good game, I guess. Not really relevant here. No, the... Okay. That's not... And so he gets no. on a plane and he realizes he's been bitten. What? How long is it taking him to turn? I know, right? I oh, and also we're going to play that song Zombie from the Cranberries. Ooh, wasn't that song written in response to a tragedy where some children were killed? Well, that's uh -huh. a good point. But counterpoint, it has the word zombie in uh -huh. it. Yeah, no, that is a good point too. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like mindless zombie fun. I'm just really yeah. stuck on that robot thing. What's going on there? We're really not going to explain that? Well, see, here's no. the thing. I I was thinking maybe we could expand on that in another project. Maybe several projects. Cinematic universe? Cinematic oh. universe, sir. Oh, man, you said the magic words. Let's do it. Oh, wait, what? Really? So Army of the Dead, Zack Snyder's Netflix zombie universe plans explained with a rom-com spinoff animated prequel and original zombie heist movie. So that's a lot of random genres for just zombies. But so yeah, outside of all that, the little details there that were uh, wrong with it, uh, I thought it was fairly enjoyable to watch. But one thing he did forget to point out was how this whole thing started, right? Because you had the army coming from one way, um, transporting you know this alpha zombie character, and then from another way you had this uh, brand new married couple who. Uh, for whatever reason, the the woman was like so happy that she decided to go down on him while they were driving, and then that caused a crash. So that's what started everything. So I th I thought it was weird that he didn't bring that part up because he usually brings up stuff like that. But uh, after that, you know, all this chaos ensued and it was uh, beautifully serenaded by uh, Richard Cheesy. I don't know who he is. He basically does covers of different songs in a lounge slash uh, swing type style. So basically in the style of uh, Frank Sinatra, he's great. You should go and look up his stuff. But uh, during that whole thing, it was just incredible to see the amount of carnage that was happening, all the different ways people die, 
all the different things that were happening because of this. And you also got introduced to the characters that were going to be involved later on in the heist itself. And even though they didn't speak a word, you basically knew what was going on. You basically knew what their motivations were and all that. So right off the bat, you're already caring about these characters. And then they get into the, to the, to this uh, heist or whatever. All the right people that you're rooting for dies. Uh, basically, there's just this asshole character who's like sort of in charge of the quarantine. Uh, he ends up getting screwed over once, but uh, unfortunately, he was a part of one of the deaths. But also, was actually ended up killing, getting killed later. And then this other guy, who you know, his whole plan was just just to cut off the head, and you know that was going to be it and essentially it's like screw over everybody else uh he was eventually killed in the most awesome way that was because of the tiger who became a zombie tiger and just freaking mauled the hell out of him dude it was so satisfying to watch and then uh time got sped up a little bit there towards the end uh they all somehow ended up in this other building with no real plan or whatever and they had me believing, like, as they were taking off to, to go away and this alpha zombie was just going to jump in. They, For a moment, they had me thinking, oh, wait a minute, are they going to be able to get out of here alive? Just completely forgetting my knowledge of past zombie movies where the majority of people do not survive. They, they just don't. And then the alpha zombie jumps in, bites Dave Batista's character, and then, you know... Uh, Tig Nicotero's character, she's flying the plane, she ends up getting hit, and then uh, as the, the bomb goes off in Las Vegas, sends a shockwave, the, destroys the helicopter, you don't hear from the person that uh, she was trying to save, but she's basically the only person who survives that whole thing, and basically, like, does this great thing of sort of repeating the process or whatever within their family, because uh, this girl was Dave Bautista's character's uh, I'm sorry I keep on referring to him that way. I can't remember uh, his uh, character's name. But uh, the wife uh, ended up turning, so he had to kill her. And then the daughter saw him turn, so she had to kill him. I thought I thought that was really well told. And then we all thought, you know, it was great that uh, at least somebody survived, but, you know, still lots of sadness there. So that's not exactly a happy ending for them. And then you had this other guy who was in the vault, who at that time, I was like, you know what? That's probably the perfect way to survive a nuclear explosion. Why didn't they just do that to begin with? But he comes out, he looks unscathed. Like, there was no obvious point to where I would see him get bit. And then, because he, he walked all the way through the desert, all the way to get to this car, and then all the way to this airport, right? And then basically, more or less, commandeers a, a, a plane with all this money that he now has, and he somehow hasn't turned. And then he has, like, the sort of sign of, like, maybe he's going to turn while he's on the plane. So, I, I, I didn't understand that at all. Like, how it took that long. Like, everybody else, it was, like, super quick, right? After Dave Bautista's character gets bit, uh, it was maybe, like, five minutes because he needed to have that little dialogue with his daughter. Uh, but for some reason, uh, this guy... His immunity was so good that it lasted for pretty much hours, right? Because it was into uh, the night afterwards and no exposure to uh, the radiation from the nuclear blast that was there. And he, I'm sure he knew he got bit, right? I'm sure he felt that. And he knowingly put all these people in danger. So really more people are going to die. And this zombie thing is just going to spread even further, even though they thought it was, you know, all good. But yeah, I that, that just had me like, what? Why would you do that to all these people? And now there's going to be more zombies and more chaos. And I, I guess that's kind of where they're going, I guess. And that maybe the rom-com spinoff is going to be... Uh, you know, with with the Dave Bautista's daughter from from this movie, I I'm not entirely sure. Uh, either way, I did enjoy it, even though despite all that other nonsense, because you know, obviously of what I just said there. But uh, that will do it for me here. But before I go, though, I wanted to give a huge shout out to all of my five dollar and up supporters on Patreon: Marvin Espinoza, Cruising Wolverine three ten, and Kepster Crone, JKA Kevin Crone. Thank you guys so much. And if you too would like to have your name mentioned at the end of each and every one of my videos, plus many other fun goodies, please head on over to Patreon.com/slash Dennis Mock and become a Patreon supporter today.
And with that being said, comment down below. Let me know what did you think about Army of the Dead. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, if you want to see past reaction on the other pitch meetings, got a nice playlist right up there full of videos for you. Share this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Read notification bell because I put up new videos every single day. And I'll see you guys next time.